Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. So last week we started out talking about templates by talking about master templates, and this week I want to continue that discussion now by talking about action templates. Um, now when it comes to action templates, what you're going to do in Animate and what you're going to do in Animate Pro will be pretty much the same. So um, I'm not going to need to go over twice how to create the templates at this point. Um, it's the master template where they really differ and when it comes to action templates everything's the same between Animate, Anime Pro and Harmony. So um, let's just go ahead and get started and um, now when I take a look at my scene file I'm just starting out with the same scene that I had left off with last time and I created my master template here um, you know from last week so let's just actually for the sake of uh, the argument, let's just bring in our master template from scratch into my scene and so you'll see that my master template has the keyframes on it and it has the different poses. So the difference between a master template and an action template is an action template is something where you're going to save some kind of action. For example, it could be an animation, um, it could be new drawings, um, it could just be keyframes, it could be all of the above. So First, I'll just do a really simple animation to show how we would copy the animation in. And when you're working with a master template that you've just imported into your scene, when you get started, what you want to do is you want to select the pose or the keyframe that's the one that you want to use for this scene, and you just want to drag it over to the first frame, and then you just want to select everything else and hit delete just to delete the exposure and the keyframes on those other layers. So now that I've got that starting pose the way that I want it, I can extend the exposure with F5 for the length of my scene, and now I'm ready to get started animating. And um, for this character, um, I'll just do something really simple. I will move his arm up in the air. Maybe I'll flip um, or rotate his hand a little bit or something like that. And it looks like I've got it set right now to stop motion keyframes, um, so it's going to jump in between them. You can set it to motion keyframes as well if you want. But what's nice about stop motion keyframes actually is you can put them like right next to each other, and you can put your onion skin on if you want as well. And um, and then you can sort of preview what's going to happen on that frame. So I can see there's the previous drawing for that um, for that element, and I can check out exactly where it is. So then if I want to like move the ear on this frame, then I can really get the posing exactly the way that I want it to be. Uh, I can go up to the whole head level, maybe move the whole head around. And this character has a bit of a funny neck there, but we'll, we'll work around it. So just going to do something kind of simple like that. I don't know what he's doing. He's getting ready to do some kind of aerobic movements here. I'll just rotate his body backwards a little bit. And of course I'm hitting B to go up the chain so as I go up with B that's going to allow me to make sure that I um, get the pose exactly right. It looks like this uh, joint hasn't been set up properly on this character but that's okay we'll just, we'll just pretend it is. So now I've got my two poses looking the way I want them to look more or less. Um, I might even want to just, you know, like get the foot looking how I want it to look and kind of, I can rotate now. I can take his entire master peg and rotate him so his foot's on the same spot. So, oops, I should have done that on the first frame. Looks like I are on the second frame. And uh, I did something odd. Okay, so got those two the way they are and now what I want to do is I want to get the leg to go underneath his center of gravity so on that second frame I'm going to move the leg over a little bit rotate it up and now I can take that master peg and I can just align the two feet so that there we go so now he looks like he's moving backwards getting ready to do something fancy Okay, and now that I've got that movement working the way that I like it to, I can collapse everything inside my master peg. And, um, oops, it looks like there's still something left over on that frame. There we go. Okay, so now I can take that keyframe and I can move it over. Let's say I want this to take place over the course of 20 frames. And then I can select the first keyframe and I can turn it into a motion keyframe 
just by clicking on that motion button and now I've got some you know movement happening in between those two and if I want to I can also set ease on multiple parameters to give a little bit of ease into that so I can hit apply and then I can double check what this is going to do. I can put my stop frame, I can just click on the word stop to put the stop frame at frame 20 and then I can play back to see how that's working. So it's a bit of an ease on that now. So if that's working the way I want it to, um, maybe I just want to give it a bit more of a pop there. Poof, right, okay, that's looking better. So if that's working the way that I want it to, and I know that I want to reuse this animation multiple times, I might want to save this animation as an action template. Now, when you're saving an action template, it's different from saving a master template because what you're saving is just the keyframes and the drawings on the right-hand side of the timeline. You're not saving from the left side of the timeline. Um, now, the important thing to realize, though, when you're doing this is that when you save an action template, it depends on the order of the layers here in your timeline. It's going to look at the order and the structure of the layers in your timeline. And when you drag and drop your, your action template back in again, it's going to look for the same structure. So if you create an action template and then you go back and you change the structure, let's say by reordering a layer, by creating a new layer, you will no longer be able to drag and drop your action template back in. And let's take a look at that. So first let's create the action template. I can select the keyframes where I'm interested in and I can just drag and drop them into my library. I get the no entry sign and I just realized the reason I get the no entry sign is because I've still got my library locked. So let's get the right to modify that library and now I should be able to drag and drop that in. And it's a good idea to come up with a naming convention here. Um, it's usually you put a couple of letters to indicate the character's name and it's a good idea to put action and then to describe what the action is so uh, let's just call this the wind up because he looks like he's winding up to kick someone and uh, now I've got that in there so if I want to just check to see if it's going to work I can just take the template and I can drag it straight back in again and you see that it turns yellow and it indicates that it is going to bring it back in so there's going to be a little bit of weirdness in between the two because, you know, I didn't set what's happening between those two. I guess I could set a motion keyframe on all of them and he's going to go back down again. Um, so now he's moving up and down. But you can see that it copied the action back in. The same thing would work if you bring the master template in from scratch. So I'll just bring in my master template from scratch and now I will do the same thing I did at the beginning where I get the pose that I want to have because I've saved those keyframes from that pose and then delete everything else so now I've just got that first frame if I drag and drop the action template right on top of there it gives me a no entry sign oh yes the reason it did was because I created the action template from the master peg so I won't be able to drag it on the group layer, I've got to drag it onto the master peg layer because it's looking for that structure. So now if I try again, it's going to bring that in. So that's the way that we work with action templates and master templates in general. You need to first create the master and then um, you, you can create the action template from the master. Now one thing to be aware of is if you drag and drop the action template in on its own without dragging the master template first, you see how I get some weirdness with the nudging on those and there are some layers that are out of place um, and in the wrong spot. Now this is normal because when you're saving something from the right side of the timeline it's not saving the detailed instructions on how to create that character. It's only saving keyframes and drawings. So when you save an action template it doesn't know how exactly the structure is working to recreate that template. So you do need to start by dragging your master template in first and then dragging the action template on top of the master template when you're ready to reuse it. So that's the first type of um, action template. In this case all I did was I was saving some keyframes to reuse. Now what about if we want to save drawings to reuse drawings? Um, this is another really good reason to create an action template. Um, for example, if you want to do a blink, 
this is a really good um, reason to do this. So let's take a look at the eyes. Uh, hopefully I have a couple of different eyes in there that I can use. And if not, then I'll just create them. Now it looks like I don't. So 